Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, our performance will begin. Please take this time to make certain all your electronic devices, such as cell phones, are silenced. Please do not use recording equipment of any type, including photography, out of respect for the actor's safety, the copyright law, and the enjoyment of those around you. Since the entire room is used as a stage, please remain in your seats throughout the performance for everyone's safety. And now, it is our privilege to present to you God's Masterpiece. was born the son of a virgin, a controversy even at birth. He was carried away to a distant country for fear of his life. When he was 12 years old, he challenged the religious leaders of his day. brought healing, where disease had brought only desolation. Thousands marveled at his endless mercy. He forgave when all others condemned. Outcasts found a new home in his presence. He gave life to those whom death had already claimed. So great was the display of his power that it confounded the understanding of even the noblest minds. He gathered the poor, the sick, the persecuted, and called them profoundly blessed. He measured greatness by making a child the example. No chains of race or status could bind him. He preached of a kingdom beyond this world, but the rulers of this world set their powers against him. Many who cried out, Hosanna, were swept away into a rage stirred up by envy and fear. Crucify him, rang out, deafening his song of hope. He was betrayed by those who could not stand and judged by those who could not see. He died a criminal's death, but his last words were in defense of his executioners. Those who pierced his side later took his side. For three days, death struggled to claim this tender outcast, this fierce rebel, but lost its grip to the resurrected power of his divine manhood. History has been his story. For 20 centuries, mankind has sought to tell it. All the poets who ever penned a verse. All the musicians who ever composed a melody. And all the artists who ever formed an image have only captured glimpses of that decisive moment when God reached through time to show the world his one true masterpiece.
unleavened bread, called the Passover, was at hand, and many traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate. Among those pilgrims journeying to the holiest of sites were Jesus and his disciples. News traveled throughout the countryside that Jesus, the Holy One of God, had reached the edge of the city and crowds gathered to welcome him. were watchful. They knew the scribes and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law opposed the ever-rising popularity of Jesus. And so it was with caution that they prepared the Passover feast for their Lord. Where will you have us prepare it? asked Peter and John. And Jesus answered them saying, Go into the city and you will find a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wherever he goes, go in and say to the man of the house, the teacher says to you, my time is at hand. 
Where is the guest room for me to eat the Passover at your house with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Prepare the Passover meal for us there. As Pharisees, we are appointed to keep pure the faith of our fathers. We must arrest this Jesus of Nazareth. We have lost all control of this man who accepts worship due only to God. He is a blasphemer. Arrest him and you gain nothing. The whole world has gone after him already. Arrest him. Ha! He eludes us. One moment he's in the temple, the next he is banished. There is a way we can capture him. We make a bargain with his disciples. And then we get one of them to betray his whereabouts to us. And then we arrest him. Who will betray him? Is it I? 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 I love to tell the story. John. My brother James and I followed Jesus and left our father Zebedee to tend the fishing nets alone. Jesus calls us the sons of thunder, James and me. I don't know why. No amount of power we could ever create between us could compare to the power I have seen come from Jesus, my Lord and my Master. For his power is the power over life and death. We were in Jerusalem when we received word that Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, was sick. <laughs> now Jesus loved Lazarus and his sisters, so it surprised us that he did not hurry to them. Instead, he waited two more days to go to Bethany. He told us that this sickness was not unto death, but that it was for the glory of God, that through it the Son of God might be glorified. As we approached Bethany, Mary ran out to meet us. We had no idea what power we were about to behold. Lord! <laughs> If you had been here, oh, my brother, he would have not died. Oh, but even now, I know that whatever I ask you to do from God, Lord, that he will give it to you. Your brother will rise again. I know he'll rise again at the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, come into this world. Roll the stone away. But, but Lord, there will be a bad odor. He has been dead for four days. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they might believe that you sent me. 
Lazarus, come forth. the grave clothes and let him go. having power over death spread like a brush fire across the land. Jesus withdrew into the desert after that. Now here we are in Jerusalem hiding in this upper room safe for the moment. But for how long? Tonight he told us that one of us, one of us would betray him. It could not be me, not after the power I have seen. But he said it. So I cannot help but ask, is it I? I the one who brings, because I bring people to Jesus. First, I brought my brother, Simon Peter, and none of us have had a moment's peace since the day he joined us. But perhaps my most significant bringing was the day I brought a young boy with five loaves of bread and two fish to Jesus. Now, Jesus had just received word that his cousin, John the Baptist, was beheaded, so we tried to hide away and give him some time to grieve, but our plan failed, so we boarded a boat and crossed the Sea of Galilee to the wilderness town of Bethsaida. We thought we could rest there unnoticed. As we approached the shore, the crowds came into view. We're there, we're there. They had discovered our destination, and thousands and thousands were there to meet us. Though we tried to discourage him, no. Jesus went to shore. His compassion drove him. He looked at the broken men, women, and children, called them sheep in need of a shepherd. He ministered to their needs all day long. Evening approached. It was the evening of the Passover feast, just as it is tonight. And then it happened. Jesus told us to feed the people. We were stunned. 200 denarii would not buy enough bread, for we counted to be 5,000 men, let alone the women and children. Feed my people. Jesus insisted. Are you, are you so I began my search. <laughs> you don't have any food? No food. Are you hungry? I found a 
found a young boy and he's brought some food. How many loaves do you have? Five loaves and two fish. Give them to me. Then Jesus took the bread and fish, and looking up towards heaven, he blessed it. And having given thanks, he distributed the food to the disciples and set before the multitude, and all ate and were satisfied. Crowds were so excited. They wanted to make Jesus their king. We were all in awe of him. And this so often happened. We strained to understand what his miraculous signs and teachings meant. The next day in Capernaum, we understood what this miraculous feeding of heavenly food truly meant. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Will he always feed us? How can I never be thirsty again? I've never seen so much food in my life. How did this happen? This man's a miracle from God. If I follow him, I won't have to work again. Will he provide all of our food? I don't think that's what he means. I know that's not what he means. What does he mean then? He's talking about spiritual food. Tonight is another Passover, but this one will eat in hiding, away from the multitudes who exalt, but exhaust him. We didn't steal away by night or sail away across the sea to escape those who would have put him to death, but they're out there, somewhere. Jesus told us that one of us would betray him, it could not be I, not after the miracles that I've seen. I am Matthew, the tax collector. Before I followed Jesus, it was my job to see to it that every tax was levied and every debt was paid in full. I was the righteous judge. I knew how to measure the value of a man. A simple calculation could tell me that. But calculations didn't mean anything to Jesus. He taught us that the value of a person cannot be measured by wealth or status, or for that matter, even age. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and just one of them goes astray, <laughs> will he not leave the 99 and go into the mountains and search for the one that was lost? And I tell you, there is more rejoicing over the 99 that did not stray, over the one that was lost, and over the 99 that did not stray. And even so, it is not the will of your Father in heaven that even one of these little ones should perish. Let the little children come to me. Oh, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. kingdom of heaven. Unless you are converted 
and become as one of these little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. I tell you, unless you humble yourself and become as one of these little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. None of us knew quite what to think of his method of placing value on people. To think that a child could be an example to a man? Why, it was unheard of. He turned the scales of value upside down more than once. He found value in sinners and even in a woman. And then he taught us that each of us owes a debt of sin that is greater than any of us could ever repay. Well, we learned that lesson early one morning, just after the Feast of Tabernacles. The sun had barely lit the sky, and a crowd had already gathered around Jesus, when suddenly, out of nowhere... that is without sin. Let him cast the first stone at her. Woman, where are your accusers? Is there no one left to condemn you? No one, sir. Then neither do I condemn you. Now go your way and sin no more. I am the light of the world. He that believes in me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Did you see that? Of course I saw that. She deserves to die. How could he forgive her? His point was not judgment. Well, what was his point then? Forgiveness. Can a man be the light of the world? He's talking about spiritual life. He is the light of love and forgiveness. Shining in a dark world. No man has ever spoken like this one. He spoke in one having authority over the law of Moses. He has no authority to judge or forgive. But he called himself the light of the world. And he gave this testimony concerning himself. Such testimony is not valid. But he said it was. And two men bore witness. According to our law, when two men bear witness, the testimony is valid. Who are these two men? Jesus is one, and the Father who sent him is the other. Who is his Father? He speaks in riddles. He said that we do not know him or his Father, for if we had known his Father, then we would have known him. He speaks like the accursed rabble who believe in him. He has no knowledge of the law. Still more and more of the rabble believe. They must be stopped. He must be stopped. How? We will arrest him. When? Soon. Jesus caused quite a stir that morning when he set the adulteress free. Well, he didn't enslave her to the law. 
And then he told us that if we believed in him, we would know the truth, and the truth would make us all free. Well, he spoke of being the light of the world, and he spoke of freedom. He spoke of the value of one person, be that a man or a woman or even a child. He spoke of truth. Jesus is all of these. And yet the sadness that hangs over him tonight is like a shroud. I don't understand it. He said that one of us would betray him. Surely it couldn't be me, not after the compassion that I have witnessed. But he said it. So I must ask, is it I? I am James, brother to John, and thus I am the other son of thunder, or so we are called because of the thunderous energy between us. We are different men now. Now that we follow Jesus, the thunder in our spirits has subsided, and we are calm. I have seen Jesus calm the storm with his hand, and even the water obeys him and becomes a solid place for him to walk. But the greatest storm I have ever seen him calm was the storm in the human spirit caused by the power of evil let loose in this world. We had traveled to the country of Gerasenes, which is across from the Sea of Galilee. Why, we had barely stepped off the boat when two madmen possessed by demons raced towards us. These two men, they knew the power of Jesus. So one ran off, and the other fell before him. What is your name? My name is Legion, for we are many. Do not send us away into the abyss. Send us instead into the herd of pigs. Be gone, I command you. Go! <laughs> One word from Jesus, and the demons fled. I have heard Jesus say, I am the good shepherd, and my sheep know my voice. The man lay like a sheep before the shepherd of his soul. Well, word spread in what seemed like an instant, and people came to see for themselves if Jesus truly had powers over the evil spirits of this world. Jesus restored the man to his right mind, and then he begged to be allowed and go and follow Jesus. But Jesus answered him, Go home to your own family and tell them of all the things that God has done for you and how he pitied you. Why did you see that? You just wanted to come home. I've been crying all night. I don't think this man who moved himself. This is a miracle. Look, the man is at peace. His mind is made whole. Who is this Jesus? Even the spirits obey him. He is the power of the spirit world. Of the entire world, I believe. This man is from God. We need to spread the word. We need to spread the That is why even the spirits of the devil obey him. I have seen him raise the dead and restore the sight of the blind. 
And, and he has healed people even on the Sabbath. What an abomination to work on the Sabbath. It is a disobedience to the will of God. It won't be much longer now. I know how to find him. We all know how to find him. It's just that he's never alone. I know the way. And so Jesus restored the man's spirit and he cast out the power of darkness. The story, the testimony of this man made whole again was heard throughout all the Decapolis. He sang the praises of Jesus and declared all that had been done for him. We all sing his praises still. Just days before today, the streets were ablaze with hosannas and hallelujahs. But tonight it is quiet. He is quiet. Strangely quiet. He said that one of us would betray him. It could not be me, not after the dominion I know Jesus has over the world and the spirit. But he said it. I cannot help but ask, is it I? pretense or mystery with me. Just the honest words of a hard-working man. Well, that is, I used to be hard-working. Well, I still work hard. It's just that now my work is different. You see, it's harder to fish for men than to merely fish for fish. Fish are a more simpler creature. While men are more slippery. Fish for men. <laughs> ah, he said many amazing things from those floating pulpits. Boats, that is. Well, I remember that one morning. A few of us had a boat fishing, and he called to me from shore, and he said, uh, Peter, launch out your boat to where it is deep and let your nets down for a catch. Master, we have toiled all night long and caught absolutely nothing. Uh, nevertheless, at your command, I'll, I'll let down the net. Forgive me, for I'm such a sinful man. Fear not. For henceforth, you will be a fisher of men. Well, we've been fishing for several years now. And our nets have been full of many kinds. Some who believe in him. Some who believe he's the devil of hell. Even I didn't always know who Jesus was until that one day. Who do people say that I am? Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah. Or some say a prophet of old who is risen. But you, who do you say that I am? For the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And this also I say to you, that you are Petrus, a piece of rock, and it is on bedrock like this that I will build my church, and even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Tonight, he speaks of a different mystery. He speaks of his death. This greatly troubles each and every one of us. But it seems that only I am bold enough to declare war on anyone who would go ahead and bring harm to our Lord. Then he told us that where he is going, that we cannot follow. I told him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to both prison and to death. But he just turned and he looked at me and he said, Truly I say to you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. How could he say that? How could that be? I would never deny my Lord. He must have been speaking to someone else when he said that one of us would betray him. Nevertheless, he said, so I can't help but that. Is it I? Thomas, a skeptic, some say. I want proof before I believe. Is that such an unfair request? I do believe in Jesus with all that is in me. I would die for the man if it came to it. Sometimes when he speaks in mysteries and parables, he glances at me with a knowing look. He sees that I am thinking, questioning the truth behind what seems like just a story. I am not alone in my quest for the meaning behind what my master says. He often baffles even the wisest of Pharisees. Such was the case with Nicodemus. This man came to Jesus by night. Rabbi! 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 We know you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the miraculous signs which you are doing unless God is with him. Unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. How can a man be born again? Is he to enter? his mother's womb a second time? Unless a man is born of water and spirit, he will not see the kingdom of God. That which is flesh is flesh, but that which is of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I tell you you must be born again. The wind, it blows wherever it wants. You can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? You are a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? 
just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Nicodemus was more confused when he left that meeting with Jesus than he was when he arrived. None of us either knew what it meant to be born again. But slowly we began to realize what Jesus meant. He was speaking of a spiritual birth, not a birth of flesh and bones, but a rebirth of our spirits into the kingdom of heaven. It's a mystery to us all <clears throat> being reborn, but in this mystery is the key to life itself, to be reborn into a spiritual reunion with God. That's what Jesus meant when he said, I am not of this world. We left our homes and our families and our trades to preach of his heavenly kingdom and to follow him who brings this new life through our rebirth. We follow him, but tonight we do not know where he leads us as he speaks so often of his death. I would follow him there as well. He knows I would. So why did he say that one of us would betray him? It cannot be me, not after I've seen with my own eyes and touched with my own hands. But still he said it. So I cannot help but ask, is it I? I have heard that you went to see that Jesus by night. Were you hoping not to be seen with him? You're not being taken in by him, are you? What did he say to you? He spoke in riddles. What did he say? He said we must be born again of water and spirit if we are to inherit the kingdom of God. This man has set out to confound this kingdom and vex our spirits. And that is all he will achieve. I do not think you judge this man fairly. He is not the evil person you think him to be. He speaks in words that are beyond our understanding. But the challenge is ours to become large enough in our spiritual maturity to understand him. There must be a way to silence this Jesus of Nazareth. You can see already what he has done. He's gained the respect of our most learned teachers. This cannot go unstopped. There is a way he can be stopped. I've been a deal with one of his disciples, and he comes this very night to tell us where we can find this Jesus unprotected by his adoring crowds. I am Judas. I am alone among this group for many reasons. I alone am a Judean. All the others are from Galilee. I alone complain when Mary washed his feet and wasted that expensive perfume in doing so. All the others marveled at her act of worship. But I alone gave one moment's thought about what it will take for this movement of his to survive. It takes money. All the others follow him blindly, figuring God will take care of their daily needs. 
but I alone have grown impatient with him. When will he take control of his kingdom and usher in his reign as Messiah? All the others believe him when he says his kingdom is not of this world. But I alone have the courage to arrange a confrontation. If the leaders of Israel will hear him out, they will see that he is the Messiah. All the others would likely wait forever. But I, I have the courage to change the course of these events. Now there will be a meeting, but this time I set the agenda. Jesus is the Messiah, I know that, but this will force him to be more assertive, and all of us will take our positions in the new kingdom that are due us. This evening, Jesus said that one of us would betray him. To betray him would mean that I am working against his purposes. On the contrary, I'm speeding up his purposes. Still, he said it. So I must ask. Is it I? The words are yours. Do what you must do quickly. Judas, Judas wait! I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover supper with you before I must suffer. Suffer? suffer. Take. Eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup. It is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine again until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. I will not be with you much longer. Where are you going? Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me afterward. Let not your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How will we know the way? I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Have I been with you this long, Philip, and yet you still do not recognize me? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, for I and the Father are one. Come, let us go from here. Lord, I am ready to go with you to both prison and to death. Peter, truly I say to you, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you even know me. <laughs> Jesus and his disciples journeyed until they came to a brook called Kidron. Crossing over, they continued on until they came to a garden in a place called Gethsemane. Jesus spoke many things to his disciples that night about going where they could not follow. His disciples were confused. They could not understand these riddles that promised only they would be without Jesus, their Lord, whom they loved so much. Over and over they heard Jesus say, In a little while you will not see me, because I am going to the Father. What is this that he's talking about, in a little while and you will not see me? Then again, he says, in a little while, you will see me. And what's this little while of what you're speaking about? Peace. What is it? Peace. My peace I am leaving with you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. All these things I have told you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will come and teach you everything and help you to remember everything that I have commanded you. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. No longer do I call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends because everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. In this world, you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. I have brought you glory here on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me, they were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, that they may be one just as we are one. My prayer is not for them alone, but for those that will believe their message, will believe in you. I pray that they all may be one, just as you are in me, and I am in you. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. Let 
Let not your heart be troubled, though I must leave you now. Where I am going, you cannot come until there's a place for you. Stay here while I go over there and pray. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. <laughs> Yet not as I will, but your will be done. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing. But the flesh, it's weak. Look, the time has come. And the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Look, my betrayer comes. Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? No, I don't. No! 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 Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. If it is me that you are seeking, let these other men go away. Lord, I'm stuck with a sword! Uh! Put your sword back in its place. He who lives by the sword will die by the sword. Do you not think I could call to my father and he would furnish twelve legions of angels? Yes! yes. yes. So and how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? Enough! Arrest him! The fulfillment of the law declared by the prophet.
prophets of old has at long last begun. Jewish law declared that only the blood of a spotless lamb could atone for the sins of the people. When John the Baptist first saw Jesus, he declared, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. On this, the eve of the Passover, the Lamb of God will be sacrificed. So even now, as an age has passed, the angel of death would pass over all those who dwell in the safety of the blood of the Lamb. Jesus was taken first before Annas, and then before Caiaphas, the high priest. Caiaphas brought Jesus before the scribes and the Pharisees, and finally before the entire Sanhedrin. All of the elders of Israel were gathered to hear the accusations against Jesus. was built by the hands of man, and that he would build another in a three days' time, not made by hands, but made by God. Do you answer nothing? Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed? I implore you by the living God. Are you the Messiah, the Son of God? It is as you have said, I am. And furthermore, I say to you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Father, coming upon the clouds of heaven. He has spoken it! Why do we need any more witnesses? Have we heard enough of this blasphemy? What do you say? He deserves death. Kill the blasphemer! You are not one of his disciples, are you? No. No, I am not. Yes, you are. I saw you. Truly, I say, this man is with the man they call Jesus. He is also a Galilean. Surely you are one of them. You are Galilean. Your speech confirms it. I tell you, I do not know him. Did I not see you in the garden with him? I told you, I do not know who you're talking about. I don't know him. The disciples were filled with confusion and fear as they saw what was to happen to their Lord. Peter was overcome with cowardice and Judas with remorse. Caiaphas. Caiaphas. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. <laughs> what is this to us? You see to that. The chief priest determined it was not lawful to put the money into the treasury, for it was the price of blood. So they bought a burial ground for the people and called it Potter's Field. Judas, convicted of his own act of betrayal, hung himself. The Sanhedrin took Jesus before the court of Pilate to the Roman Judgment Hall to see the governor, Pontius Pilate. Anyone who heeds my voice 
is of the truth. What is truth? I find no guilt in this man. None. No guilt? But he is stirring up the people all across the country. He's been all throughout Judea with his teachings, starting at Galilee and even to this place. When Pilate learned that Jesus was a Galilean, he ordered him to be taken before Herod because he had jurisdiction over Galilee. Herod, too, could find no fault in Jesus, yet he allowed his soldiers to mock and ridicule Jesus amidst the Sanhedrin as they continued to accuse him. Herod sent Jesus back to Pilate. Pilate knew it was out of envy that the chief priests and elders had delivered Jesus up for death, so he took very seriously his wife's warnings to have nothing to do with this righteous man, Jesus. Once back before the court of Pilate, once again Jesus stood before the people who demanded that Pilate issue an order to crucify him. Pilate thought he could appease the people by having his soldiers beat Jesus and they brought him before the crowd wearing a crown of thorns. He could find no fault with this man, so he looked for an avenue of mercy to release him. Every year at Passover, it was Pilate's custom to release one prisoner whomever the people wanted. He hoped to release Jesus with this act of mercy. In his prison, he held Barabbas, a thief and a murderer. So Pilate set the question before the crowd.
forgive them. For they know not what they do. My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? Into your hands I commit my spirit. It is finished! was foretold haunting me all these years that which I'd prayed I'd not live to see now has come true piercing Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed.
after the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. from the dead on the third day. So it was, as the eve of the second day wore on, mere men stood guard at the grave of God. Then, just before God,
be amazed. I know that you seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified, but why seek ye the living among the dead? quickly to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. I will not leave you as orphans. Don't leave Jerusalem, but stay and wait for the gift that my Father promised, whom you have heard me speak about. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria to the uttermost part the world. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. 
and lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age.
Remain standing, remain standing. Thank you, everyone. Outstanding. What you feel right now is not just great music and acting and all of that. What you feel in your heart right now is the power of the resurrected Lord. The power of the resurrected Lord is in this place. And this is what he's saying to you. Give your life to me. And then live as though you have done so. How do I give my life to Christ? This way. The sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Take control of the throne of my life and make me the person you want me to be. If you have never prayed that prayer, I want to invite you to pray it. Let's just bow our heads, close our eyes. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Take control of the throne of my life and make me the person you want me to be. Amen. In your bulletin this evening, there was a little response card. If you have prayed that prayer for the first time, we would love to know about it. Just fill out your name and address and leave that out there at the bulletin table when you leave this evening. This is what I'd like to do. I'd like to dismiss the cast first down the center aisle, and as soon as they're all gone, congregation, you are dismissed. Cast, lead the way, please. <laughs> Thank you.